Lord, I praise you for the day that you have given us today. Lord, I pray, Lord, as we prepare to remind ourselves what you accomplished on the cross, Father, my prayer is for those that may be here that don't know you, that today might be the day of salvation. Lord, we, we come in honoring your perfect life as God coming from heaven to earth. You lived a, a perfect, sinless life. You went to the cross. You paid the penalty for our sin. You conquered sin when you resurrected. Father, we come remembering what your son has done. I pray, Lord, that you would be glorified today in this. And I pray this in your son's name. Amen. Good morning. Uh, there are men that will uh, pass out Bibles. If you need a Bible, please raise your hand and they will deliver one to you. We are going to be looking at the uh, main teaching passage of the Lord's Supper found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So when you get the Bible, or if you have your Bible in your hand, please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we are going to start in verse 23. Paul's words, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. The man, a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. I want to remind us of five things from this passage. This first reminder is this passage is about Jesus Christ freely giving up his body. He voluntarily gave up his body. He gave his body that it would pay the penalty of our sin. Every sin we would commit for those that are chosen, Jesus accomplished that on the cross. The next reminder is in verses 24 and 25. If you have a red-letter Bible, you will notice that those, this verse, these verses are in red. They're Jesus' words. And it says, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So the second reminder is the statement, do this in remembrance of me. For, for the Christian, this remembrance of Jesus is your dependence on our Savior Jesus. So as we remember, it, it signifies, it shows our utter dependence for something we cannot do for ourselves. And the third reminder comes in the statement, this cup is the new covenant. This new covenant, the old covenant was when they had to give sacrifice after sacrifice, killing animal after animal. It was truly a bloodbath as they tried to atone for sin through the killing of, of animals. And in contrast, the new covenant is what Jesus accomplished once and for all, that there would be atonement by the one act he did, dying on a cross and rising from the grave. And the fourth and fifth reminders I want to point out are found in verse 26. Look at verse 26. 
As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. What I want to remind us is this bread represents Jesus' body. This is a reminder of the body that he freely gave up. And the cup is a reminder of the blood that was shed on the cross when he died at the cross to be the atonement for our sins. In the fifth reminder, again, look at verse, verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. For the Christian, Scripture teaches that when we participate in the Lord's Supper, you are proclaiming the Lord's death. You are proclaiming what Scripture teaches about Jesus, that he is God, that he came from heaven, that he died on a cross satisfying God's wrath due to sinners, and that the resurrection is Christ conquering sin, and Christians are to proclaim this good news until he returns. So if you're here today and you call yourself a Christian, if you do believe what Scripture teaches, what Jesus has accomplished, we want you to participate with us in, in taking the Lord's Supper. But if your testimony about yourself is that you're not a Christian, that you don't believe what Scripture teaches, we are truly glad that you're here, but we would just ask that you would allow the elements to pass you by. Because this is a time for believers that believe what Scripture teaches about what Jesus Christ has accomplished. The men are going to deliver to you the elements, take them, and as you prepare your heart, as you've pondered these reminders from this passage, take communion on your own, and I will come up and close in just a few minutes.